Good morning and welcome to our English lesson today. Uh, it's a continuation of pronouns. And we talked about pronouns last week. We said there are words that are used instead of a noun or in place of a noun. And last week I talked about pronouns. I began with personal pronouns. Say pronouns are given. Uh, there are different types of pronouns, personal pronouns, we have relative pronouns, we have indefinite pronouns, indefinite pronouns, uh -huh. and then we have what we call a possessive pronoun, possessive pronouns, possessive pronouns, and then we have what we call demonstrative pronoun, demonstrative pronouns. So it's a personal pronoun, shows the doer or maybe the receiver of an action in a sentence and we said personal pronouns are divided into two nominative and objective nominative and objective personal pronoun personal pronouns nominative objective pronouns nominative personal pronouns show the, 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 the doer of the action whereas personal pronouns whereas objective pronouns show the receiver of the action show the receiver of the action and we talked of how we can use personal pronouns in our sentence, and I say this is very common, especially when it comes to question 16 to 25. They ask these questions, they are very common question, common questions, and then they are going to ask them. Said if you have two subjects and you want, if you are given two subjects, use the nominative pronouns. If you are comparing, use the nominative pronouns. But if you have a preposition, uh, if a pronoun is coming after a preposition, it should be objective, it should be objective. For example, we are going to say differ from, mm -hmm, differ from her, her is what? An objective personal pronoun, her is an objective personal pronoun, personal pronoun, but you can say, mm -hmm, you say she is uh -huh, taller, she is taller than, she is taller than he, if you read that sentence, it sounds wrong, but in this sense, it's correct. Correct. It's taller than he. The sentence is correct if you are comparing, which is the comparative form of the adverb, the comparative form of adjectives. You use what? You use personal pronoun. You use personal pronouns. So today, we are going to go ahead and continue and then talk about relative pronoun, relative pronouns. Like, if you ask a learner to give you examples of relative pronouns, most learners are in a position to name relative pronouns, relative pronouns. But the problem is when a learner is supposed to use the relative pronouns in a sentence, in a sentence. And not only just in a sentence, especially when this, is come, when this comes in question 16 to 20, 1 to 15, 1 to 15, the broken passage, the broken passage. So you find that you have been given the others, maybe answer A is who, answer B is whom, Answer C is whose, uh -huh. answer D is we, and then you have answer D which is what, which is which. So learners can come up maybe with the use of which, and they can come up maybe with the use of whose. But when it comes to who and whom, then they are at a standstill. People do not know when to use who in a sentence, and when to use whom in a sentence, and when to use whom in a sentence. So today we are going to learn how to use relative pronouns in a sentence, in a sentence, different relative pronouns in a sentence. So what is a relative pronoun? It shows the connection between a subject in a sentence and what is said about the, su the subject. Shows connection, it shows connection uh -huh, between a subject, shows connection between a subject, uh -huh, between a subject and what is being and uh -huh, what is being and what is being said about the subject and what is being said about the subject in a sentence what is being said about uh -huh, the subject in a sentence what is being said about the subject in a sentence in a sentence and we've so talked about subjects and objects in a sentence. Subjects and objects in a sentence. Subjects the doer of the action and the object is the receiver. This is very important, especially when talking about passive and active voice or when you're talking about subject verb agreement. Subject verb agreement. Now examples of relative pronouns we have number one is who. Number two is whom. We have which. Uh -huh. We have whose. And then we have what? We have that. We have what? Who, uh -huh. whom, which, whose, 
who, whom, which, uh -huh, whose, and then the, and then that. These are examples of what relative pronoun, relative pronouns. How they are used in a sentence is what is different, is what is different. Now we are going to go and begin with what? To begin with who in a sentence, in a sentence. Who in a sentence as a relative pronoun shows the duara of the action, shows the duara of the, shows the duara of the action. Who in ascendance shows the duara of the what? Shows the duara of the action. Now, if I say the duara of the action, you are the main subject. You are performing an action, an action. It is simple to use who and whom. It's the, and then when you have whom, whom is going to show what? The receiver of the action, the receiver of the action, the receiver of the what? The receiver of the action, or we can say if it's not the receiver of the action, or the person to whom something is done, the person to whom something is done. For example, the teacher, uh, the teacher beat her. Her becomes the what? The whom in a sentence because you become the receiver of the action. Like the person to whom the action was done to, was done to. But when it comes to who, it shows the doer of the action, it shows the doer of the action. So before we go with that, why am I talking about the first two? So that we can find out how to differentiate them, how to dif how to differently use them in a sentence, in a sentence. So we have that. Then let's go and say, we have a blank space. Uh -huh. This is the boy. This is the boy. Dash uh -huh. broke, broke the, broke the chair, broke the chair. This is the boy. Dash broke the chair, the chair. And then we can hope for half. This is. Uh -huh. The boy, eh? dash, I told you about, I told you about. So you have the two, you have the two sentences, sentence one, this is the boy, dash, broke the chair. And then you have sentence two, this is the boy, dash, I told you about, about. Sentence one, this is the boy, dash, broke the chair. And then sentence two, this is the boy, dash, I told you about, I told you about. Now, they have given you, uh, in, let's say in brackets, you have who, and then you have who, and then you have whom. And the instructions of the question are, fill the blank space, fill the blank spaces correct, correctly. Now, when it comes to this, you will see, most people are going to get this answer, these questions wrong. Most learners are going to get these questions wrong. Because they do not know when to use whom, and when to use what, when to use who. Now, I've said here, who, shows the doer of the action, who shows the doer of the action. Whereas whom shows the receiver of the action, shows the receiver of the action. That means if you want to fill your blank space with who, you ask yourself the question, what did the person do? What did the person do? If you want to fill the blank space with who, you ask yourself the question, what did the person do? What did the, uh -huh. what did the person, what did the person do? Now, if you find an answer, then you are going, if you get an answer to your question, what did the person do? Which is the subject in the sender? The sender's person is simply the subject in your what? In your sender's. And you said who shows the doer of the action? The subject? The subject. Now, who, who, if you want to use who in your sender's, you simply are going to ask yourself, what the, the question, what did the person, what the person do? So I come in the question one and then I say, this is the boy that broke the chair. This is the boy that broke the chair, the chair. Now I have boy in my sentence. I'm going to say the doer of the action, not the receiver. The act, like the receiver of the action is the person to whom the action was done, was done to whom. Are you getting that? Now I say, this is the boy that broke the chair. Now I have my subject, which is Bob. Is boy the main focus of the sender of the sender so i'm going to say what did the boy do what did the boy what did the boy do now what did the boy do the boy broke the chair the boy broke the chair now i have an answer what did the boy do you simply ask yourself what did the boy do and then the, the answer is the boy broke the chair the boy broke the chair so my answer is that this is the boy my answer is going to be this is the boy who broke the chair this is the boy who brought the chair. It is answering the question, what did the boy do? Or what did the person in the sentence do? The doer of the action, the doer of the the doer of the action in the sender, in the sentence. Shows uh, who 
shows the doer of the action of the action. Now, whom the receiver of the action, the person to whom the action was done was done was done to. Now, this is the boy. The blank space is going to be filled with what? With whom? Because ask yourself the question. This is the boy that I told you about. What did the boy do in the sentence? Yes. If you ask yourself the question, what did the boy do? Did the boy do something in this sentence? No, the boy didn't do anything. But what happened to the boy? Somebody was telling someone else about him. About him. So the boy becomes the person to whom the action is the, uh, uh, the action is is done to. The action is done to. He becomes the receiver of the action. The receiver of the action. This is the boy whom I told you about. Whom I told you about. So whom you are feeling is understood with who? With whom? Because if you ask yourself the question, what did the boy do then do you get an answer you don't get an answer what did the boy do in sentence two this is the boy dash i told you about i told you about what did the boy do the boy didn't do anything in the second sentence why somebody else did something to the boy did something to the boy so we said if you want to use whom which is the receiver of the action this, uh, or some or, or, or refers to the person to whom something is done to then you are going to use who whom and something is done to this boy what is the something that has been done to this boy something someone has told uh, someone else about him about him so you are going to go in for whom you are going to go in for whom this is the boy whom i told you about whom i told you about and this is the boy who broke the chair what did the boy do he broke the chair he broke the chair so if you've been given whom and who who and whom to fill to, to, to fill the blank spaces, especially when it's question one to fifteen, you simply go to the from a full stop. I've always told people if you want to answer question fifteen one to fifteen correctly, you read from a full stop, a full stop to a full stop. There is a high chance that these questions or the the blank spaces are connected in a way, in a way. So from a full stop to a full stop, ask yourself the question in that sentence. Ask yourself the question: What did the person do? If you get an answer, you use whom. If you don't. Get, who if you don't get an answer you use who if you don't get an answer you use whom now there's something else you want to talk about when you talk about who and whom so who and whom are used with person are used with persons who and whom are going to be used with what person persons like we can't use who and whom when we are talking about animals or things or ideas or places or places animals ideas things or play places. We are not going to use what? We are not going to use who or whom or whom. But instead, when you are talking about who and whom, just make sure the subjects in your sentence are what? Pe people. The subjects in your sentence are people or person. Person. The subject in your sentence should be what? The person. What did we say is a relative pronoun? Shows the connection between a subject and what is being said about the subject in a sentence. In a sentence. Now, when you come to who and whom, it should be with persons. Uh -huh. Some people so you can say it should be uh, the, the whatever is being talked about the who and whom should be reflecting uh, should be talking about people or person people or persons it shouldn't talk about ideas things or places or places now you have you can find some sentences where they give you two sentences especially the use of who and whom this is a topic in class eight i think where they say hey, this hey, hey, amina is a girl uh -huh. for example they say Amina is a girl. Amina uh -huh, is a girl. Uh -huh. Then they say she, uh -huh, she, she, she went to Mombasa. She went to Mombasa. Amina is a girl. She went to Momba, to Mombasa. Maybe they have given you to these two sentences, and when you've been given the two sentences, they want you to, 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 to they want you to make one sentence from the two sentences. They want you to come up with one sentence by joining the sentences by using who? By using who. Now, Amina is a girl. She went to Mombasa. My sentence is going to read, Amina is a girl who went to Momba. Who went to Mombasa. Amina is a girl who went uh, to Momba. To Mombasa. Now, we are having Mombasa with a capital A. With a capital M. Amina is a girl who went to Mamba, who went to Mombasa. Now, she, Amina is a girl who went to Mombasa. Amina is a girl, she went to Mamba, she went to Mombasa. This is what we are trying to connect by use of who? By use of who. When we connect by use of who, we are going to say Amina is a girl who went to Mamba, to Mombasa. What do we have here? We eliminated the she from the sender. We eliminated she from the sender. She is a personal pronoun, a personal pronoun. What I'm trying to say is that if you are given two sentences and they want you to, to join the two sentences by use of who, make sure you eliminate the personal pronoun. 
or whom, make sure you'll make the personal what? Make sure you'll make the personal pronouns. And we've talked about personal pronouns. It doesn't matter if the personal pronoun is nominative or objective. Objective. If it is in a sentence, it should be eliminated so that who can be who can take its place? Who can take its place? Are we getting that clear? So Amina is a girl, she went to Mombasa. If you join these two sentences, you're going to say Amina is a girl who went to Mombasa. Amina is a girl who went to Mombasa. Now, that brings us to uh, relative pronoun number three. That brings us to relative pronoun number. That brings us to relative pronoun number three. And our relative pronoun number three is whose. Our relative pronoun number three is who is whose. Relative pronoun number three is whose, and you know whose can be a relative pronoun, and whose can also be a possessive pronoun, a possessive pronoun. So who shows possession, whose as a relative pronoun shows what? Shows possession, or we can say ownership, or we can say ownership. Ownership simply means something belongs to someone, something belongs to someone. For example, this pen is mine, mine is a relative, is a possessive pronoun, and then if I want to use whose in a sentence, and then if I want to use who's in a sentence to show possession, I'm going to say, uh -huh, uh -huh, let's say, uh, uh, Abdi, let's say Abdi, uh -huh, Abdi is a class 8 boy, Abdi is a class uh -huh, 8 boy, uh -huh, then we are going to say his mother, Abdi is a class 8 boy, uh -huh, whose father, whose father is a doctor, whose father is a doctor, Abdi is a class 8 boy, whose father is what? Whose father is a doctor? This father is a doctor. What does that mean? The father belongs to who? To Abdi, who is a class 8 boy, who is a class 8 boy. Now, Abdi is a class 8 boy. Who's, uh, whose father is a, do a doctor? He shows possession. The father belongs to a, the uh, father belongs to Abdi. Are you getting that? So I'm using who? I'm using whose. And you realize that I wanted to come up with two sentences and say, for example, I have sentence two. I'm saying Abdi he, is a class eight boy. Abdi is a class eight boy. Uh -huh. And then I'm having his father is a doctor. His father is a doctor. His father is a doctor. His father is what? His father is a doctor. Now, if you've been given the two sentences and they want you to join the two sentences, then make sure what you make sure you eliminate the possessive pronoun you make sure you eliminate the possessive pronouns if you've been given two sentences to join them by use of whose you eliminate the possessive pronoun if you've been given two sentences to join them by use of who you eliminate the personal pronoun you eliminate the personal pronouns that means you should be in a position to know the a personal pronoun and should also be in a position to know a possessive pronoun you should also be in a position to know a possessive what a possessive pronoun so abdi is a class eight boy dash father is a his dash father is a doctor. Abdi is a his father is a doctor. Abdi is a class eight boy whose father is a doctor. Whose father is a doctor. Now who shows possession? That means the father belongs to who? That means the father belongs to uh, to Abdi. And then one thing you should put you should put in mind is that whose can be used with people and animal. Whose can be used with people and animals. Whose can be used with what? People and animal and animals. This is the boy whose father is a doctor. The, uh, the, 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 the dog, uh, who's, the, dog uh, the, the, the lion whose cubs were killed, uh, the lion whose cubs, for example, you can have the lion uh, whose, uh -huh, whose cubs were killed, whose cubs were killed, the lion whose cubs were killed is Rory, is roaring. The lion whose cubs were killed is Rory, is roaring. What does that mean? Whose cubs? The cubs belong to the what? To the lion? To the lion. So whose can be used to show possession between animals and pe between Whose can be used with, with people and animals to show possession? To show possession. But I said who and whom can also can only be used with, pe with people. They cannot be used to show ideas or they cannot be used to show places or they cannot be used with animals. They cannot be used with animals. Now that brings us to, to, to uh, relative pronoun number three, which is which number four sorry number four we have relative pronoun number four which is what which is which which is which which refers to things and animal refers to things uh -huh. which refers to things and animal and animals you cannot use which <coughs> with be with people and it's common people use which when they are talking about people you do not use which when you are talking about p as a relative pronoun when you are talking about what 
when you're talking about people instead which is used with things and animals and animals for example the cup uh -huh, the cup which uh -huh, the cup which broke uh -huh, is the cup which broke was ma the cup which broke uh -huh, the cup which broke was ma was my which reference to the cup to the cup so the the which is a reference to the cup cup is what cup is a thing a cup is a thing so when you are using which in a sentence just make sure which can be used with things and animal and animals but which cannot be used with people which cannot be used with people i know most of you are in a position to use which in a sentence and to use whose in a sentence to show possession position what i know is 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 going is maybe difficult or it's going to be a hard task is when people are supposed to use who to choose between who and who's in a sender in a sentence. Make sure you make short notes and you attempt the questions you've been given. Have a good day.